I wanna go over the safest takedown for self-defense. Now, in order for this takedown to work, you have to be positioned behind the person with a body lock or off to the side. Now, in general, when I am, even if I am directly behind the person, I tend to switch my hands off to their hip anyway, just again, side note real quick, because if my hands are more out front like this, there's they have an easier ability to break that grip compared to if I'm off on the hip here, it's a little bit more difficult. And then again, I can still set up the exact same takedowns. Now, the reason that I consider this the safest takedown for self-defense, uh, if we put this in the perspective of like law enforcement officers, because we worked with officers over the weekend, I need to be able to provide you with takedowns that if we're taking somebody down in a street altercation or subdue them, cuff them, whatever, regardless of this person's size or age, I need to be able to take them down safely so that I reduce the chance of them getting hurt. I'm not trying to, at any point, slam somebody in the head or cause some serious injuries because I'm going to be held liable. Now, the way that this takedown is set up just mechanic-wise is the idea that I'm going to be behind them. I'm going to switch my feet so that my near side leg is directly behind their hips, essentially, so that essentially all I'm looking for them to do is start sitting as if they were sitting on a chair or sitting in my lap because I'm Santa Claus. And as he starts falling back, he falls all the way down to the ground, right? Um, obviously there's more to that, but that's generally the premise. So again, they're gonna kind of fall, they're gonna hit their butt and then roll back under the shoulders. Now, the way that I will set this up once we get here is I don't just want to, like if we just stand, like, just stand straight up, right? If we just stand straight up and I do this, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for me to pull them back because I have to kind of generate that uh, momentum a little bit more. So what I, tend, what I tend to do is when I get to this position is when I lock down one, I know he's going to start kind of fighting these grips right away. But two, I kind of want to just drive into him a little bit just so that he pushes back and bases out. Because now when he pushes back to resist that, right, he's already kind of putting himself into a seated chair position. So now when I feel him push back, I quickly switch and we just bring him straight down to the ground. Feet wise, what I don't want to do is one, I'm not trying to like drop this knee all the way down to the ground because again, if we're talking concrete, you're just gonna slam the knee. So it's one that as I drive in, I'm just gonna step back and just kind of switch my feet and we go from there. The other thing is I wanna make sure that my knee is directly over my ankle. If I have my foot extended like this, there's a good chance that I'm gonna damage my knee or something in the process or if it falls sideways, I, there's just a lot that could go wrong in the situation. So I wanna make sure that my knee stays over my ankle. And now again, as I pull him, we get here right away. This leg is going to pressure in and either split the legs here, or if he starts kind of going to his back, I'm going to start kind of walking this leg to try and keep his hips rotated over, pressure him with my head a little bit. And then from here, I can work off to the side and we can kind of control the top position from there. Now, one little detail uh, in case we're going with somebody that's a lot bigger than you, right? Again, I'm going to drive into him. He's going to post. He's going to start kind of pushing back into me. I'm going to switch. We're going to get here. Maybe I'm struggling or he's really trying to like put, pull himself up, right? And I'm just having a hard time pulling him down. One thing that I can do with this leg is essentially I'm just going to do a little kickback. And as I do that kickback, I'm going to pull and just buckle out that base. And right away again, I'm going to pressure right in. Now, what I don't want to do, come back up real quick, is I'm not leaving that leg out there. I'm not trying to do this and leave the leg there for the chance that maybe this leg gets caught underneath or maybe he starts kind of just grabbing it. You know, whatever the case is, I don't want to leave that leg hanging. So I want to do a quick, get out of the way. I want to do a quick like, kick back, and as I throw that kick back and I knock that base out, we pull him straight down. So putting it all together, right? However, we end up in this position. I get here, I suck him in. Maybe initially I was trying to go for like a body lock or I'm trying to pick him up. He starts walking his hips away from me. So I drive into him a little bit. He bases out. I'm going to switch. I'm immediately going to pull him to sit back. If he has, if I'm struggling with just this part, I'm going to again do a quick kick back, pull him straight down. Again, we drive back in. And this is key again. We take him down. I want to drive into him. Again, I can split the grip. I can hip in here if I need to, and we start controlling the position from there. And there you have it, the safest takedown for the street. Stay oh. safe.